what's going on you guys welcome back to the burly fishing podcast we are live again on a thursday night and we are so pumped to be here with you guys and thank you so much for uh, accepting our lateness uh, excusing our lateness if you will we have some technical difficulties because we're trying some new things we want to always be making the podcast better so we're trying better audio better camera setup using discord to launch the podcast unfortunately for our amazing special guest tonight we got devin mullenbeck Mullenbach. See, I told you last names are I just don't <laughs> don't have last names. Sorry. <laughs> but we got Devin here. Devin, thank you so much for uh dealing with our nonsense trying to figure out the uh the technicality of this episode. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you guys? We're doing great. We're 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 great. Paul was uh getting puked on by his baby while we were prepping for the podcast. So that was pretty cool. Lovely. Pretty cool day. <laughs> all all in a day's work, right, Paul? Sir sir new dad. These days these days <laughs> uh all right you guys we've got a show lined up for you it's a show it's gonna be a good show it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, i think we're gonna have a good time tonight so hey make sure i haven't called this out in like 20 episodes you got your dad pops and your mom pops let's uh bust them out get ready to roll because we're gonna have some fun tonight if you guys like the content be sure to subscribe to the channel smash a like on this video like right now and share this video around. More people we get into these lives, the more fun it is. And let them know we're doing a giveaway. We've got a monster bass giveaway going down tonight. Towards the end of the show, we're going to give away a $25 gift card to the website. Good for any of the tackle and apparel they have on there. Like burly stuff. Or also that jacket that Paul's wearing. That we're going to need very much tomorrow. Because we're going to go waiting. And it's going to be 50 degrees and raining the whole time. With 17 mile an hour winds. Right, Paul? 18, yeah, gusting yeah. 20. But we're going to have Nico Bates, so you know it's going down, and we're going to smash some smallies. We'll find a way. We'll get to a dam. We're going to have fun. And we're going to talk to Devin about all sorts of multi-species fishing tonight. Maybe some hunting, too. Maybe all sorts of stuff. we got all, all sorts of stuff to talk about. It's going to be fun. Um, Dunbar the Fishing Machine. Thanks for a dollar, my dude. You're fantastic. All right. I didn't even mention it yet, but hey, if you guys want to support the show, <laughs> throw us a super chat because you're awesome, and we love you. All right. No, oh, you're on oh, the you volume too. What's that on the volume? The volume uh, is yeah. is it low again? It's low again. Crank that volume. We got Discord <laughs> now. We should be able to control it. Uh, Chaz is working on it, y'all. Thank you for bearing with us. Uh, we'll figure this out. Hey, sixty. What is this? Episode sixty six. Yeah, totally 66. professional. By episode one hundred and twenty five, we're gonna be really good at this. Just, just <laughs> hang tight till season seven. We're gonna do it together. All right. Uh, I think what you mean is by episode one hundred and seven, we'll be on time. Yeah, don't worry. We're gonna do it. We've been on time most of the time. I swear, Devin. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. That's how we roll. Uh, real quick, shout outs to the new members. We got Manny Overman for the Burly Bunch Elite. Welcome aboard, my friend. And Storm Wells renewing again for a second month, changing the color of that logo on the Shark Deucer Squad. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. So if you guys don't know her, you guys need to go check out Outdoor underscore Dev. This is Devin right here. Uh, she is a rep for DSG Outerwear, which is a women's outerwear company. So we're going to talk about that. They've got a couple different uh, accounts out there, right? Devin is like DSG Fish, DSG Hunt. Any other ones? The snow, yep. For snow, snow DSG snow. Okay, awesome. So all sorts of stuff. She's an outdoors woman through and through. We hunt, we fish, we forage, we do all sorts of stuff, right? So we got we got a lot of uh, topics to talk okay. about. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Paul. Let's kick it off with that cue of the D. Let's roll. All right. The, w the way we like to kick off the show. Usually we would prep you for this beforehand, um, but don't worry. It's actually better this way. Uh, the, the, we like to start off the show with with, a, with an easy question. It's one that I like to say. Uh, you can't be wrong, but you can be like less right. You know, it's like an opinion based. It's an opinion based question. Okay. So, what we've got is, uh, and this is this one's a little bit open ended. Um, I recently ran into this uh, bank fishing a couple days ago. How how did and this is for everybody, Jeff, even Chaz, you want to jump in? How do you handle leeches? Like, what's your like method for dealing with leeches? Uh, I don't touch leeches. First of all, <laughs> I hate touching leeches. Um. <laughs> I make my boyfriend do that part because that's the one bait I want to touch. Um, but we, when we use leeches, we're just using them under bobbers with a jig and yeah. most for walleyes. So. What happens if they get on you like they got on me? How are you dealing with that? I would freak out. Uh-uh. Not <laughs> Wait, so, so it's not a problem for you? You just don't expose yourself? Yeah, just right. don't do that. 
if you're talking about like being in the water and then you find them on you, uh, no, that's not happening. <laughs> so you, you amputate the leg, right? Like, I mean, then problem solved. Oh, were you were you scouting? Like, were you? Because I remember you sending me a snap where you're like, or no, it was. Did you do an Instagram story? It was I like, did. What did I catch? Like giant <laughs> fish, leeches, or something? Was, the answer was leeches. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I did. Um, I was doing a little bit of. It was like triple duty. I was I was checking out a, a piece of water that I've driven by a bunch of times. Never fished. Always wanted to look at it though. Uh, because like 75% of it's private and there's really only like one place where you can get in. So I wanted to go check it out. It's a little bit of a walk. So I, I wanted to do that. So that was one. Two, um, it's a great place to go shoot ducks actually. And so I wanted to check it out for ducks because I wanted to see how steep the drop was to know like if I had to bring a dog, if I could do it by myself, you know, that whole bit. Um, and then uh, I just wanted to fish, right? I just wanted to see if there were fish there. So yeah, I got out there, uh, you know, uh, scouting in my Crocs, and um, yeah, I, I was like, you know, knee deep in the in the muck, and uh, when I came out, I was like, eh, that's not all leaves; those are seventy five percent leeches. So, yeah, that's where that question came from. Um, but you know, <laughs> I was walking in the woods, and I did, I did have two ticks on me. Um, you know, dude, <laughs> like the, the, it's not a good year for ticks. If you know anything about ticks, we did not have a really cold end of the season. Like, in, mm -hmm. we're in Michigan. We didn't have a cold end of the season. And it wasn't cold enough, long enough, because it, I mean, it thawed super early. Like, February, we were like, oh, we're done ice fishing. And, uh, yeah, that's not enough to kill ticks. It's not even enough to kill mosquitoes, spiders, flies, like, all that stuff. So they're just, like, around. So it's going to be a nasty year for ticks. I've already, I've already, I've probably already flicked between turkeys and just mud. I probably flicked, I don't know, 10 ticks off myself this year already. And I was only out for two days to hunt turkeys. To I I can't. Is that a humble brag? Is no, it's like, not. It's it not at very, all. It felt very braggadocious. Here. Like <laughs> ticks, ticks can smell me, and they're down. <laughs> it's not good. Oh, oh my god, that's. I'll tell you right now how I deal with it. Uh, when I deal with ticks, I like I have no method. I just take. I have an extra towel in my truck for whenever I just happen to need a towel. I just wipe them off. That's it. I have yeah. no strategy. There's no, there's, I've heard people say salt. I've, someone's already here said burn them um, yeah. with a lighter, which I've actually heard works really well. Yeah. Um, and then I was told to stop grossing out Devin. That's, that's what people have said <laughs> yeah. so far about ticks or about leeches. David Eller says, shut up, Paul. Uh, yeah, I've had leeches on me before. I just rip them off. And I feel like that's the wrong thing to do, but that's just what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was kayaking one time on the Muskegon River. Great place. And uh, I was in, like, uh, it was a sit-inside kayak. So my feet were, like, you know, in the kayak. But we'd, like, pause, get out. It was not a fishing trip. It was a drinking trip. Uh I don't know why I air quote is that like it's legit. <laughs> like, it's exactly it was literally it was. A, it was exactly what it was. Uh, so I was like drinking with friends. So we'd get out, hang out on the shore and like the Muskegon River. There's like some mucky parts here and there. So you get in the mucky part. That's where like the, the, the leeches love to be. And I remember getting out, getting in my kayak. We paddled to the next spot, probably like an hour. And then I got out of my kayak and I was like, what is this bulbous monstrosity on my ankle? And it was huge, huge, like had just been draining me dry. <laughs> like I just ripped it off and hucked it. Dumb. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> oh, All right. Well, hey, what? David said to shut up. So let's move on with our so show. Let's... The rest of the show is not about leeches. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of, we always like to start guests off um, kind of talking about their background. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to hear about yours because I feel like you're part of this big, larger dsg crew of people i don't know how they find you guys who are or gals who are all like these really well-rounded like uh outdoors women so tell us a little bit about your background kind of what your year looks like based on what you like to do and and we'll take it from there sure um so i grew up in southern minnesota and grew up hunting and fishing you know it wasn't like a whole lot there we go um, we just bobber fish every once in a while and just pretty much deer hunted shotgun. Just went out to, um, oh gosh, I can't even think of what it's called, but it's just a group of guys and then me. I was the only girl. 
Um, <laughs> that's really how I got into it. Just It just progressed. And then eventually, about five and a half years ago is when I met my boyfriend, Derek. And he's the one that like really lit my fire to all of this. So I got into more species, more techniques. Um, we got into... I had duck hunted a few times before I'd met him. But that's the main thing we do now. Is That's probably our favorite thing. And then I got a bow few years ago and I got into that I haven't shot anything with my bow yet I don't feel 100% confident um, but that's something I'm working on and yeah we like to forage I found um, asparagus ramps. yeah asparagus that's my favorite but ramps was uh, the first for me this year so yeah I just grew up in the outdoors with my dad stepdad my grandparents and it just grew from there so Paul asks the easy questions. I'll be asking the hard hitting questions here. Uh, yeah. But what, what's it like? I mean, for you, like your experience, um, you've obviously mentioned a lot of male influencers in the outdoor world. Like, uh, I know the DSG team obviously is all female outdoors women. Uh, so, yeah. other than the DSG team, what's been your experience with other like female anglers, hunters, et cetera? Like, have you grown up around a lot of them or has it been mostly like men? It's mostly been men. Yeah. Um, I do have girlfriends pretty much all across the Midwest, and which is great, but we only get to see each other a handful of times a year. Yeah. Um, and my best friend, she lives up in the cities in Minnesota too, so it's like we only see each other a handful of times a year. I have gotten to hunt with them, um, but there's like nobody right around me that likes to do it like we do. So it's it's hard. Um even like we went up to Canada, we were supposed to go to Canada every year for a fishing trip. Obviously we can't anymore. Well, that might be changing, but, um, soon. <laughs> yeah, soon. and I was the first female to go on that. My first year was, I think that was three years ago, but I was the first one to go and it was just a bunch of group of guys and they've been doing it since 76. So that was pretty cool. And they treated me just like one of the guys, you know, I was didn't get special treatment or anything like that. So that was, that was cool. Nice. Okay. That's good to hear. So that, see, that's what I was wondering is how often you get together with like the DSG team. And, you know, if you get a chance to, to fish with other female angler, anglers or hunt, uh, you know, with other outdoors women. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's interesting. It's such a, like a male dominated sport really. And, and like, we suck at our podcast because we've had three females on our podcast in 66 episodes, but we're, we're here to defend ourselves and say like, it's, it's been very difficult to find other female anglers that want to be on the show. <laughs> is, is it more than most Chaz? Thank you for the credit back to the show. <laughs> but we had Christine Fisher on, uh, we had Carrie Cates. It was like the first, uh, female angler we had on the show. She's way back, uh, black bass angler. If you guys want to check her out, you guys don't know Christine Fisher. I mean, have you, have you like contacted her at all or like ever met up with her or anything through? Yeah. yeah? Yep. She was awesome. at uh, one of the ladies Midwest meetup events. Uh, that mm. was a fishing event out on Mille Lacs this year or this past winter. And she held a seminar too, talking about different rods and line and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. But yeah. I was, got... How, how many people were at that? Cause I saw that she posted that, but she didn't, uh, I think she only posted like about it two times. I actually, I, I probably should have DM'd her because I was really interested. I know she's a huge, like, uh, between Mille Lacs and Lake St. Clair. I know she just goes out and beats the so ever living awesome. tar out of them. She <laughs> just knocks them dead. Um, so I kind of, I kind of wanted to talk to her about that, but tell me about that because I, I actually, like I said, I should have, I should have messaged her about it. That was a really cool thing that she did. Yeah. So Alicia, um, Joy outdoors that's her instagram name but alicia thompson she's the one that created ladies of midwest meetup and puts them all together um but for malax that was i think probably close to 25 to 30 girls i think we had about five or six different ice houses and each one had between four and six people and so that was pretty cool we would get together every now and then and you know we had suppers seminars things like that but then we also had our own group time like because you're obviously in a little house, each group of girls. So we got to go do whatever during the day if we wanted, hang out at night, but that was really cool. It's always fun to meet different people from all over the Midwest and just to learn their backgrounds or experience. Cause we had girls who are experienced like Christine 
all the way down to somebody who doesn't even know what a rattle reel is, you know. So it's pretty cool to go to those events and just meet new people, meet new girls, meet new girlfriends. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's so good to hear. Uh, speaking of female anglers, we got Candy Fiala in the chat here who went on a fishing trip. She actually won a fishing trip on one of our previous podcasts when we talked to autism anglers. And uh, she went on a trip with our buddy Ted, who runs Flat River Outfitters. Guys, remember, go check him out and support him. He's also here in the chat. Who is also in the chat, and they're talking about a story that went down. I didn't get to get the full story. I was, like, prepping for my move, unfortunately, on the weekend, so I couldn't meet up with them. But they went out on a raft uh, on the river. They smacked the smallies. They had such a good trip. I'm so pumped that you guys caught fish, big fish. I mean, it's it's a testament to Ted's skill, but also that river being awesome. Uh, And I heard, I heard, and Candy, you're going to have to explain this to us. Uh, yeah, you caught a 20. She caught a 20-inch smallmouth, which is fantastic on that river. And the water's so low right now. That's awesome. And somebody put a, I think Candy put a, a hook through her thumb is what I'm hearing. So I want to hear about this. <laughs> Tell us in chat. Um, we'll, we'll keep talking to Devin, but I want to hear the story because I didn't get it from Ted yet. He didn't give me the full shtick. His camera died. He had his camera on board and it the battery died or something or like the the uh he he brought his like external battery and it didn't work bro we got to help him with his camera we, we'll get him hooked up <laughs> r.i.p to that video i got the first 30 seconds where they're like hi jeff hi paul and then they just like had a great trip <laughs> yes they knocked him dead that's freaking cool man they crushed it that's so awesome so uh i guess one question i have uh i just i what I, the reason I reached out to DSG initially, right, was uh, I love the team that, um, that that they're putting together. Like when I look at the team of reps, you know, having I'm not going to say I'm like an industry insider, but, you know, having, you know, been around a little bit and seeing some of the teams that other people have put together um, with a smaller pool of of like potential, you know, just there are less women that self-identify as like hunters and anglers, but that smaller pool of people dsg is putting together like this really hyper focused hyper hyper super high quality group of people who get out and don't just like you know go hunt high wire for deer or you know don't just go on guided trips for you know largies or whatever like they like people who get out do it on their own a lot of foragers which i think is incredibly cool uh but people who ice fish people who hunt people who go out west and go big game hunting hammer the crap out of the midwest like the midwest you guys is like tapped um but just like this really really cool i follow like legitimately i don't know it's got to be 80 percent of the people who are on like the dsg fish minimum team um just because like you guys have just done such an amazing job of finding finding this like really cool niche group of people and carved it out of what is essentially like a smaller uh a smaller subset of like hunters and anglers right um so knowing that like all these people have like these really neat like this broad spectrum of like interest where does where does like fishing like fall on like the list because you talked about like duck hunting is probably number one where does like where's like where's fishing is like 12 to 7 like where is it at oh man and you can you can treat ice fishing as like different fishing because i feel like everyone on this channel mostly it's bass right um but I think, you know, you could treat ice fishing as something different, too. Maybe that lowers, maybe that puts it down even lower. Uh, I wouldn't say so. I really like ice fishing, too. Um, under under waterfall hunting, it might be second. I oh, mean, wow. Ice. I would so put for sure. And I, w- I can't just pick one species. I, You can't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that. I, like I just... That. I saw the picture you just posted of some crappies that looked like they might have been largemouth. Um, <laughs> I was like, dang! Like you could, a, that one, those two fish could have been dinner. Yeah, those, those two fish could have been like dinner for me. That was legit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've been after the crappies. We might have a couple more days, but the spawn is probably almost over. So the males yeah. are going to guard the nest, but those females are going to be gone. Yeah, yeah. So we we're on like the the same setup because I was just on the water the other day with online outdoorsmen and we smacked the crappie and 
Sorry, you guys are going to have to wait for that video for a while. There's two of them. Uh, I did a collaboration with Online Outdoorsman, and uh, it was a great day. We we crushed it on a Grand Rapids lake that I've never fished before, but he has. So when you see the first video, he had the upper hand, okay? Okay. Uh, we had a little challenge. Somebody may or may not have walked away a loser, but it's fine because I caught about 100 crappie that day. It was ridiculous. I couldn't keep them off my boat. Um, but it was awesome. Yeah, they were they were still kind of like garden beds. And uh, it was a cool lake, black and white crappie. Like, you would just go one for one. It was so cool. And they're just gorgeous fish. Gorgeous fish. I love that. So I like that you say that you don't stick to just one thing. Because, I like, in this industry, like, the, the bass or nothing kind of thing drives us nuts. Because, like, for us, it's pike. Like, <laughs> pike. All the, every time we hook into a pike, the bass angler is going to be like, oh, gosh dang it and we're like yes 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 and we just get so pumped about it <laughs> so but you would say so ice fishing is numero dos for you is that what we're saying yeah wow well, fishing in general but yeah probably well, open okay thing, but yeah so what do you okay. what do you what do you fish out of like what are is it like uh because jeff and i exclusively fish out of kayaks um, so we used to have a boat, a uh, 16 foot old Lund, but the throttle control actually broke last summer and we tried to fix it. We couldn't figure out what was wrong. So we actually got rid of it and we're on the hunt for a new boat now. So really we're just using our 12 foot hunting John boat at the moment. <laughs> hunting but John boat. That, oh, that works just fine. As long as you're not on like big water though, cause you're in Northern Minnesota. Uh, no, I'm in uh, North Iowa now. Oh, I used to... oh, God, you went down. That's not even that far. No. But so we got to stick to, I mean, the shoreline's pretty close. So that's why we can fish for shallow crappies out of it. Um, we probably wouldn't go too very far. Otherwise, take it on the smaller rivers because all we have mm. is just a holding motor forward at the moment. Man, you guys got to just. It's not like it used to be because like boats are not easy to come by right now and they're probably going to be super hard to come by and super expensive for like the next five years because um, everyone went out and bought boats. So like maybe it'll be like workout equipment where like right now, if you want to go get like a rower or whatever, you could just like go pick one up off the street because like everyone bought one during COVID and they're like, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe maybe in a couple of years, boats or in a year or so, like boats will be like that. But until that happens, it's tough to get your hands on a boat. It's tough to get, it's tough, it's tough to get your hands on a quality motor. Yeah. yeah. And we're trying to find, you know, the certain type of boat we want. We want a tiller, but all of the ones we're finding is either not the right size we want or it's too expensive. You know, just nothing what we're looking for. So you're looking for a t You want something that you control on then? Yeah. Are you looking for like a, well, like an 18 foot, like deep V aluminum? I would prefer that, yeah. Um, Derek wants 16 foot, but I want 18. We want a platform um, up top and a back bench too, so we can both cast for muskies up top. Otherwise, it sucks casting from just the lower deck. <laughs> it's the worst. Yeah, love it, Ted. What was the boat you had? If you're still in chat, there, I gotta. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll message you it because he had the <laughs> same. He had the same setup. Was it? It was a G3. Gosh dang it. It was like a center council drive. Like, oh my gosh. I need you. Ted, tell me your boat. Send me a message. <laughs> he has he has a raft that he he took like candy out on. Um, but his other boat is uh it's an 18. It's a John. It was sweet. I got to fish with him on it. Uh so yeah, maybe something like that. But Facebook Marketplace, like all day, because all those nerds that bought boats and they're like, I'm gonna be a fisherman. And uh, they're like, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> now the boat sits over on the side of the garage. <laughs> That's definitely what's happening. It's just, uh, you're right. Like, workout equipment's the same way. Because, like, you, uh, it's tougher to give it away. But during COVID, like, in the heat of it in 2020, you could sell, like, 35-pound dumbbells for 150 bucks, And they should go for, like, $35. Right. Like, you want it, come pay that money. It was, like, the new drug world weights fitness yeah i can already see that people are coming over from monster bass with uh carl with uh carl jacobson who was on theirs <laughs> that's awesome Yo, carl calls his boat tinny i love it jagman called that out <laughs> yeah 
So if I have any uh, rattle, that would be a bad thing for a boat, I would assume. <laughs> I feel like that needs to be the name of our boat when we get it. It's Tinny Rattle. Tinny Rattle. <laughs> uh, okay, did you guys name your boat? Is the John, does the John boat have a name? No. So I, I was walking I was walking in my neighborhood. This needs to be one of my questions for somebody that like is like a big boat person that we get on. I was walking in my neighborhood and there was like a random boat that was out and it was called like Cheese Pizza. And I, I'm not joking. I, I'm gonna if I ever get a boat and I get to my get my druthers, I'm gonna name it like just some random food because honest to God, I, I'll never forget the name of that boat as long as I live. And it just looked hilarious on the back of it. I'm totally gonna do that. It's gonna be like blocko like, cheese. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it, it'll just, no, no, no. That's it. That. Blocko it's cheese. gonna be like a salami sandwich. I don't know. It's gonna be really great, whatever it is. It's gonna just be some like random food. It's it's gonna be the blocko cheese salami wrap. I like it. There's Dipped in mayo. It. It's a very long name. Yeah. <laughs> it, it wraps around and up the side. <laughs> That's funny. So um what's uh so social media is a big part of what you do, uh Devin, and, and a big part of what your whole team is all about, and obviously getting to rep. We'll get to talk about GST here shortly. I really wanna we get to we are gonna we're gonna hammer you first. They're not important. It's about you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. DSG, don't, don't be mad at us. <laughs> but um, what's uh like? You know, obviously social media is important, but it takes up like a ton of time. It's the time suck. Like posting every day, posting twice every day, making sure you're doing all the right things and figuring out hashtags and all that stuff. Um, is this is this is? I'm assuming this is not your day job. I'm assuming that you uh, that you have something else that you do on the daily. What's uh, what's that? Um, I'm a mobile drug and alcohol technician, so I go to the place of employment to do pre-employments, randoms, reasonable suspicion, post-accident, anything like that. Uh, we do a lot of DOT work and railroad. So railroad is a main, like the main, um, portion that we do because they're testing their guys, you know, very often alcohol tests too, before they get on the train. Um, and they're very strict about that kind of stuff. So, but we have a lot music of music to my ears. That's exactly what I want to hear when we're talking about getting on a train. I want to hear that, all, <laughs> not, <laughs> that those guys have already been tested and we're good to go. Right. Yeah. They're very lax on their text testing. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like, oh, oh no, I don't know. <laughs> Yeek. That sounds that's cool. very, that sounds very intense. Uh, and also, like, do you get to travel a lot? Like, are you driving around to, like, new locations a lot? Or is it, like, the same spots that you're hitting over and over? Um, it depends. I have gone pretty much two hours in all directions of me. Um, but I have gone to different, uh, like, Union Pacific, I've been to probably a dozen of their different locations. But we do have, like, um, small businesses, too, that we're contracted by. Like, a ready mix company that has four locations around us so i've hit up all four of those in one day and we just get all of the random tests done um there's a few that are just close to home here so that only takes me like 30 to 40 minutes to do but yeah it's i get paid to drive so that's awesome i'm by myself yeah. so that's awesome and it's you <laughs> quick and easy and then i'm back home sending in the paperwork so that's nice. really cool because I I always kind of wonder like people who are really successful on social media I have like I'm just like green with jealous rage because I just feel like it takes so long uh like I have a nine to five right or it, it ends up being like an eight to six and uh, I just feel like that is a horrible situation to be in and trying to be doing social media like it's not <laughs> it's definitely not ideal. Um, or you always got to be thinking ahead too like now that I'm out what can I do to get some content done so I can have that for the future when I don't have time. Yeah. Well, and I just don't know. I mean, like, I just don't know how you guys do it. Cause you know, I, I love to duck hunt. I love to turkey hunt. I love to deer hunt. I love to bass fish. I love to pike fish. I like to fish for walleye. I like to just walk around in the woods and look at stuff. I can't do any of that. Like I get to bass fish like one day a week and the rest of it is like just on pause. I mean, and I'm like, I'm not here to complain. Like, you know, I'm happy with my life or whatever. But at the same time, like, he I see people complaining. <laughs> see people, but I see people who are like just getting like to me, which is like awesome content. But I'm like, dude, that is like amazing that you can be like, oh, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to go forward. And then like the next day, I'll see that person's account and they're out like, you know, hitting a lake after work or whatever. And then 
The next morning, they're like, oh, guess what I'm doing today? I'm going scouting for deer. I'm like, I haven't scouted for deer in three years. I'm like, what? Um, that's fantastic. I, I legitimately think that, like that is something, uh, having the time to do that and making the time to do that is something to be aspired to. I think that's really cool. Uh, so we had a question, one of them that just came in. Are you, do you want to do that one, Jeff? Which, which one just came in? The one that, uh, I think it was Gfon. Oh, asked, was it? I also thought maybe worms naturally. No. Which, well, which question is it? It was the one about, and we can let Dev answer this one. Um, yeah. Best bait to use after it rains oh, or while go. it's raining. And we'll call for bass. I know for me, um, it really depends on if you're in the river or you're in or you're in a lake. Um, if you're in the river and it's a river that has like a lot of runoff, like not super rocky and it gets like really murky, I'm I'm going something that's like super disturbance that is really easy to find, that is probably going to be black or like really dark green, like dark dark color, and it's it's going to be like in your face. And I'm you know that means like double rattle jig, uh 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 buzz bait gigantic really slow moving thumping spinner bait um something that is like a square bell that is going to just be like hitting everything in sight um something like that that is and it's probably going to be like black dark purple dark green something like that um if you're in a lake and it's like currently raining man i honestly i'm going top water Unless it's like popper. really early in the season, I'm going popper um, yep. or something that you can work on top, like a jerk bait, like slow and pause. Because mm -hmm. I swear I've had like some of my absolute best days knocking them dead on a popping frog uh, when it rains or a, or like a rebel popper. Um, Jeff, river, river or lake, black whopper plopper, black buzz bait with like a black and blue trailer and uh, Colorado blade spinner baits. White and chartreuse on that. And oh, always. That's like 90% of the spinner baits I own. And they <laughs> always slam. I mean, if it's raining, gold blades, but white and chartreuse still. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I would throw. <laughs> frog in the pads. Black frog in the pads. Then or, what would you? Uh, oh, go ahead. Or, uh, you know, a, uh, a wake bait. Wake bait. I don't think you mentioned that, but that would be another good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Devin, what would you what would you be throwing down? Oh, I have no clue to be honest with you. <laughs> You'd be like gigantic worm, six feet long. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that KVD worm that you gave me like years ago. <laughs> yes. I, I think I, I gave it away. I think it was in a giveaway. <laughs> like a t oh, was it a ten inch or an no. eleven inch? It, yeah, it would have been 11 at least. And then we got those X-Zone 11 inchers. I think that was in a Monster Bass box. I have, yet to catch, I have yet to catch fish on an 11 inch worm. And I feel like a lot of people like probably should Damn. be laughing at me for that. It just never happens for me. I've tried it a ton of times. I've, I've rigged. I, pro I think half that bag, over half that bag is gone. Never actually caught anything on it. If, if you guys are catching on 11 inch worms tell me in, how. Michigan, in Michigan, tell me how. Like anywhere else, if you're in Texas, don't tell me how. I don't care how you catch them in Texas because I'm not in Texas. <laughs> so I don't... don't come at me with your nonsense. Also, somebody brought up the uh, cicada. Uh, so uh, cicada hatch kind of deal going on right now. Also, G Morehead 459, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> you're fantastic. Yeah, I, I got you. I caught you. If you got a question, hit us up with that too, please. If you guys super chat, throw us something. There it is. He's got one. So real quick on the cicada, because somebody brought it up earlier. I think it's the Brood X, right? Like it's moving. I think they're moving north. Um, so our buddy Rudd, Alex Rudd, who was on the um, the Monster Bass podcast, the live stream just a minute ago before you guys bounced over here. Thanks for coming over here, by the way. Uh, he's got them. And then I saw a TikTok the other day of somebody in Texas, and they were just all over their yard. So you guys, yeah, <laughs> Devin's like, no way. Bro, we were just talking about leeches, talking about cicadas, gigantic monster bugs that have crazy chirps that sound like power lines. They're disturbing. Uh, so, yeah, they're coming. They're coming soon. I can feel it. I don't think it's going to be that big a deal up here, though. I think, like, that south hatch is going to be nuts. I don't, I don't think so, man. I don't know. Also, Devin, talk to me about this quilt that you have that you're rocking right now. Uh <laughs> 
this one was handmade by my grandma who passed away um, two and a half years ago. So, Aww. yeah, it means a lot. I've got a whole bunch of hers. She was phenomenal at quilts. And I'm always quilting. Whoa. Dual pattern? Oh, yeah. That thing is oh, gnarly. Wait. Nice. Hey, you got to get comfy for the podcast, right? <laughs> That's perfect. Um, all right. So question from G Morehead 459 comes in. Uh, got first frogfish today. Congrats, dude. That's awesome. I have yet to get them. Paul got out, snuck out and got them on me. Snuck ahead. Freaking guy. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Good job, bro. Um, made me think. Would you all rather have a day full of dinks or a day with only a handful of frog blow ups, frog blow ups all day? I'm not even going to think about it. Paul? Dude, I would take the frog blow up every time. It's not oh. even a, there's something, something magical about a frog blow up. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but mm. it's like fishing. Man, I don't know whether the first, I think. A frog blow up's probably up there with the first time you see like a fish flash and you figure out what it is. Like when you don't know what it is coming up, you know it's big, but you don't know what it is. And then you see it, you see it like, you know, two, three feet under the water and you're finally like, it's a pike, it's a muskie, it's a walleye, like whatever. Uh, it's usually a bullhead, whatever. And then it shows like that moment is always fantastic. That's the only thing that even comes within the same galaxy as a, as a, as a top water blow up. I'm, I'm taking that one all day. Devin, thoughts? Yep, I agree. Isn't it nuts? Don't yeah. you? All right. Crap Go ahead. Me. It scares me. I was just going to say, like, I, I'm, I'm going to put it, I'll plant my flag right here. I don't care what you guys say. I get scared <laughs> every time. I don't care if it's a 0 0.01 pound bass. Like, I go, oh, God, bam. <laughs> like, every single time. If you guys watch any of my videos, we got some frog videos up. We got the Lunker Hunt Spider video. And then uh, I think we did one on the Monster Bass channel too, but like you guys can see it in the hook sets, man. <laughs> it's like I've got, I've got, I've got, there was a moment in one of the river fishing trips we did where we're in two yeah. feet of water and we're like three feet from uh, from like this little island, and I could see the water was going underneath this uh, log, and I threw my little rebel popper out there, and we probably had six blow ups like just right in that little area. The yeah. first one, I legitimately, I. I I was like a three-year-old whose dad came up and was like, Bleh! like I jumped like straight out of my, like straight out of the water. It was, I'll never forget. It's it like, what a joke. Dude, I've, I've had a few good ones on camera where like, uh, I think there was one, I was on the grand river and I was fishing the six cent sack and I had uh, one of their wake baits and it actually fouled up. So I was running it back to the boat and a smallie, like three pound smallie was chasing it. And I couldn't see him cause he was like two feet down in chocolate milk water smacked it just like came up and at the boat hit it and i was like yo and like he's just on i got him and i just like peed my pants it was nuts <laughs> oh my god but yeah if you guys don't get scared when you get frog blow ups get out of town you're fibbing you're either not you're doing fibbing. it right or you're just like an amazing human and you have a different skill set than the rest of us but um, yeah fishing on. just real quick fishing with riley brings up uh sticking them when you get the frog bite too, that that is definitely a challenge uh, that that I had to also overcome. Uh, so I, I can tell you, like, you just gotta say set the hook and then set the hook. Like that's the magic sauce that somebody told me back in the day, and uh, it really works. I think. Speaking of Carrie Cates, who was on episode eight or whatever, she mentioned it on that episode too. Uh, so it's a commonly known thing and it helps if you just have that like split second because the reaction, the reaction is you always just want to go, bam, as soon as you hear like that. So don't like, don't like just set the hook as soon as you see or hear, just go like one, two or set the hook and then set the hook. Just give them a second because what happens is like they grab it and they turn and if you just pop it right away, you don't give them a chance to like really get it in their mouth all the way. So you miss every single time. And I was doing that. Paul and I had like a few really frustrating days. I remember the day I figured it out. Paul was like just not sticking them uh, on this one lake. We were talking about this lake the other day. And like he was so mad. But then a couple trips later, he was smacking them left and right. So, I mean, it just took a little like and cadence and bow and now i like feel really comfortable with it i don't really miss them anymore on the frog what i totally cursed myself didn't i <laughs> just knock that one <laughs> like now i'm gonna miss every frog this see here Dev, what do you do to stay on them on top water especially with frogs like what's your do you do you think about it or what do you what, what's going through your head 
I still have the issue of yanking it too quick, um, especially on the kayak when you're at that level. Yeah. And I get too excited, and then I get scared, obviously. And I just, the reaction is just, I can't break the habit of letting it sit for two seconds and then setting the hook. It's so hard. Cause like I'm I'm the guy that couldn't wait for Christmas to open his presents. I'd be sneaking in. I'd be like, all right, I know where mom hit them. They're up in the top of the closet behind her old shoes. Like I'd go up there and just go sneaking around looking for them. I'd ruin Christmas every single year. So it's like really hard for me with the frog bite. I'm like, okay, but I know like the reward is so worth it. So yeah, just like the brief pause, the briefest of pause is not long. Just like the briefest of pauses, and you get them every time. It's so fulfilling <laughs> so i watched a video i watched a video of seth fighter um mm. and the camera angle was like very um wired to fish like they had them they were the camera was like a little bit low and you could kind of see like from his knees like all the way up here and it was like he, he was like silhouetted and he was throwing like a baby frog like a small a smaller frog and just kind of talking about it he had this one and the way I, you could hear the, of the fish, and I watched him. He reeled down and just boom, and like stuck it, and it was a giant. And I like, I now like think of that amount of time. Like I just play that like clip in my head unconsciously, and like I just want to do that. And I don't know what it was, but like when I watched somebody do it really well, I was like, this is what I'm gonna do every time now. It's and now cool. I legitimately just think, wind down. And like the the right when I hear the sip, I'm like yes, and I wind down, and then there's nothing in this entire. I don't know how a 12 inch fish feels like a 40 inch fish when it's on the frog. You could have the heavy, you could have an, a magnum heavy, and, and you would still just you go right into the backbone on it. It's the most wonderful thing on on this planet. It's fantastic. So satisfying. <laughs> oh, not you. It doesn't. You could. I have. I actually have. Uh, I just went out, snuck out for a little nap time session, knocked him dead on the frog. I had like seven or eight like really quality hook sets that I'm like really excited to like edit together. I'm just gonna put them all back to back, and that's just gonna be like my hype video like for the rest of my life. For the rest of your life. <laughs> oh my god. So, all right. Dev, tell us about uh, a little bit about how you got connected with DSG, um, yeah. and then and kind of. I'll ask some questions maybe about what it's like to work with them. And, and then we'll talk about like some of the lineup and stuff and the gear you use, but how'd you get connected with them? Um, well, I always knew about their hunting line. Um, I had never actually owned a piece of DSG from, oh gosh, I don't even know when I bought my first piece, but um, I knew about that like the very first thing. And when I saw that they were coming out with an ice suit, I was like, you know, I've been in the market. I went and tried out a different brand, and I just didn't like how it fit. So Can you say I, which one? We don't care. Um, it was <laughs> Striker. I was gonna guess Striker. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh! Uh, one of the Reed stores, and I tried on both the jacket and the bibs, and it just felt boxy on me. It was very poofy, like a marshmallow. And I'm like, nah, not about it. So then, when I saw DSG was coming out with one, I was like okay, I'm going to try this one, and then I'll decide. Like, if I have to put up with the Striker one, I'll use it. Because before that, I was just wearing a pair of Carhartt bibs and a camo hunting jacket. <laughs> so I found some in stock at a fleet farm in the city somewhere. And, well, let me backtrack. Before I did that, I saw that they had their pro staff application put out, and I'm like, eh, maybe I should try it, and then I can... You know, if I get on, I can try their suit, whatever. So I originally applied, but it seemed like their process took forever, but they were just had to go through so many applications and whatever. So when I went down to Fleet Farm and I tried it on, I instantly fell in love with it. I'm like, I need this now. Like, these are the only two in my size. So I bought them that night, came home a couple weeks later. Um, I got the congratulations email. You, you've been accepted. So I was like, cool. Well, I already have a suit, so now what? You know, like, I'm still happy to rep. I really liked it. I had actually fished twice out of it before that email had come out. And they were super nice about it. They said they were going to give me, um, 
like a credit on my account for any other DSG stuff so I could pick out whatever I want and then I got the rest of the package like we got hats and um, gloves things like that so that was pretty cool um, I bought my first hunting stuff with that credit so that was cool too but I just I fell in love with the stuff even you know before I got on the team I put it on and I'm like I'm not walking out of the store without this. This is yeah, you're like hell yes. Take my money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I That's get that awesome. feeling because you know it's I I've heard people like kind of poke fun at like women's stuff. They're like, oh, it's like pink or whatever, or like you know, or like look at it and be like, well, all it is is like you know, slim fit or whatever. And and I yeah, I what bothers me about that is like. I've, I've, there's like mantra from uh, playing rugby, especially like as I got a little bit like more into it, and it's like look good, feel good, play good, and that is a hundred percent legit. Like if there's one less thing that you can like take off your plate, and better yet, if you can put something on your plate to like add confidence, like that is one hundred percent legit, and that goes for like everything. Like you can't as a as a dude, you can't tell me that you don't like it when you're like, dude, this fits me perfectly. I feel like I look good. Everything works the way I want it to work. It fits the way I want it to fit. Like, I'm comfortable. Being comfortable in a deer stand, you can't tell me it's not important. Like, period. And when I think about, like, if someone came to you and was like, uh, hello, dude, you know, whatever, you normally wear large. Everything you're going to have now is going to be extra large. And also, it will fit like a wet blanket. Go have yourself a nice time out in a deer stand, like, or or whatever, right? Or or you, you can only wear a Columbia double XL fishing shirt. Have a nice day. Like... You're not going to have a good time. Like, you're not going to buy the stuff, and you're not, you're just, it's not a good, it's not good for you. You're not going to be happy. And so, when I see, like, women specific, like, Patagonia just came out with, like, the most unbelievable, like, waiters that I've ever seen in my life. Like, specifically, I was jealous, like, specifically designed for women. And when I saw what DSG was coming out with, like, you know, like I'm slightly jealous of some of the, like, really cool features that they, like, really thoughtfully put in. Like, the sleeve wipe on the zinger inside the inside the inner pouch of a lot of the the yeah. ice gear i was like hell yeah i want that like um who, who I guess it's comfort? the greatest who, who needs it <laughs> i mean this snotty dude right here this snotty dude <laughs> yeah the the old man columbia button-up shirt come on now like you can't have you guys ever tried on? Those on? <laughs> have you guys ever tried on at a columbia store <laughs> it's a joke it's a joke they're such a joke. But Roland Martin rocks them, bro. <laughs> Roland Martin outdoors can rock a Columbia shirt. Only dudes so with like your... gigantic beer guts can run those. Yeah, so can your grandpa, but like not you. Not you, oh. bro. <laughs> no, I can't. It's a hilarious I could fit 17 other shirts underneath one medium. When when I first got into fishing, I was like, all right, I need some fishing gear. Cause like at the time I only had fitness gear and I'll give you guys a, a little well, idea of what I'm going through here. Fitness gear is designed to fit slim fit. So I went from fitness gear where I'm like, oh, yeah, a large shirt. It's a large shirt. Fits real well. Almost like a schmedium. Fits, you know, you know, hugs the curves. Looks real nice. And then you go to the Columbia outlet store. And you go, I'm going to put on this sick button up. And Extra then you're like, bro. Yeah. Like, no, you could get a medium, wouldn't matter. It would just like shrink around the shoulders. So you couldn't, you would be like here, you'd be like, all right, this is great. And then like the waist would be like, <laughs> like what? This, these proportions don't make any sense. I couldn't find a single item, I think, at all, like button up wise, that like worked for me at all. Like nothing, nothing at all until, uh, I mean, gosh, we, we started getting like, well, Monster Bass does like next level shirts. So they're more slim fit and they fit way better. And then we got our own shirts. We wore those and we've dealt with a few companies since then that do a good job. Like the Akuma larges are nice. Um, but most of the time shirts we get are like that. What at best 50, 50 blend at the worst, guild, 100%, 100 cotton <laughs> gilded shirt, the heavy gilded cottons that are just like, cool. This weighs five pounds. If it gets wet, it will shrink to this size and <laughs> like be worthless. And they just feel like sandpaper on the inside. Maybe 220 grit. If you're lucky, it's just like scrubbing away your skin. <laughs> Look, it's a joke, man. Apparel's a joke. But it's cool that like companies like DSG are putting out premium apparel. So like that, you guys in chat, you know, 
like how hard that is to come by. I mean, especially since we talked about earlier, like how small, unfortunately, like the niche of female, like outdoor, anything like hunting, fishing, anything is compared to uh, the men. And if the men can't even figure out their own gosh dang apparel, like, of course, they didn't figure out the female apparel. So it's, it's just cool to see that for sure. Yeah, it's super high quality gear. And all of it is made by women for women. So they get it. They understand. They have all sizes of different models. And, yeah, it's just cool. <laughs> so how do you, how do you feel about the Fluger lady president reel? Stuff like that. How, how, do, how does that make you feel? I do. Well, Tell not, you have. I do have one rod and reel, like the combo I bought. But yeah. that was four or five years ago that I bought that is not my favorite setup. But if I got to use it, I'll use it. It's mainly just for a bobber, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> but... Awesome. Curveball. Had to throw you the curveball. I see stuff like that all the time. I'm like, huh. <laughs> like... The flip side of it, too, is, though, like, dudes get marketed to all the time. Like, I've got, I've well, got, yeah, uh, I, got they, lo- I know, but I've got, <laughs> Go I got, but I got to lose, I got to lose Mach 2, right? Yeah. And or a Mach one, and it's like all like green and white and black, and like looks all aggressive and and whatever. Like I don't see the right. problem. Hang right. on, do you think men own green, white, and black? Like that color? Do you think that's a manly color combo? No, no, I'm, I'm just saying it's like it's very aggressive. Like it's clearly not like all black. That's not aggressive. Your your smash rod is aggressive. Sure, which is we'll go like we'll go with that one. Whatever. Straight orange. Is it orange? Yeah. Red. Is Reddish red? orange. Like, yeah, it's like. Uh, like it's like a it's like looking at the surface of the sun sure whatever it is right like that's a it's basically a ferrari right looking rod i mean dudes get marketed to all the time like you think they like name bows like predator you know like you know primal murder xt like that stuff is not that's that's yeah well primal primal murder xt is (laughs) No, but it really probably should be. I think a lot of dudes would find that very appealing. No, I mean, like, you know, like they're like dudes get marketed to like very hard, and mm-hmm. you know, obviously because there's a lot of them, they buy stuff. But like, I don't have a problem marketing to women. I think like, uh, to me, like when I saw like what Patagonia did with like their stuff and what DSG does, which is it's more about like fit, quality. Yeah. And then, like, really thoughtful, like, because there's stuff that, like I said, there there was two or three things in some of the, especially the bibs, that I was like, I want that in my bibs. Like, that would be great if, like, I could get that. Could someone please reach out to Carhartt and let them know that I want that in my work bibs? That would be great. Um, they wouldn't they won't, you. But I kind of, I would, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. They'd be like, no, sir. Up. We will give you these rock solid and also <laughs> rock hard uh, Carhartt bibs that you will have to bash I'm the stones. Them in four, I'm still breaking them in four years later. Um, <laughs> I'll never break in. I'll never <laughs> break in. So, uh, Devin, you talked about like what's your um, what's your like your like uh, never give it up piece that you got from like DSG. Are we talking open water or ice fishing? Don't care. Top number one won't give it up. Number one, no matter what. <laughs> That is so hard. Well, well all right. Top we two. only <laughs> we only do hard hitting questions here. Yeah. That's what this podcast is all about. <laughs> okay, top two. I like that. Top two pieces. Well, obviously the ice suit. That's killer because I've been able to stay out longer in colder weather with that mm. than I've done before. Have just been very comfortable. And um, there's. So they came out with the rain suit this year, and I actually haven't actually been on the water with it yet. Um, today it was actually pouring rain out, and we had just planted a tree last weekend, and the wind was so bad it was swaying back and forth. So I threw my raincoat on um, from DSG, and I went out there and had to tie some ropes to it, and whatnot. But it'd be between that and their sun shirts because um obviously i haven't had the full effect of the rain suit i have full confidence in it though because it's dsg but i really like all of their sun shirts they're lightweight i haven't had any issues with them they've just been great to have no sunburn you know do they have hoods i was gonna say follow-up question (laughs) hood or no hood um i don't mind the hood i don't use it a whole lot because i mostly have a full hat on and obviously my hair is covering my ears um, but there are two different shirts that have hoods. Um, one does have a built-in net gator that is removable as well. So 
That's like... you know what I'm talking about. Like Apco comes out with a hoodie that's got a stupid thing. And they're like, look at us, we're the best in the world. DSG's like, we had uh, that. you can take ours out. What's yeah. up? <laughs> I mean, I mean, David Ellers brings up a good point though, Paul. Like, you know, you could just order these things in a ex to. extra large. I might have to. I'm legitimately. I might have to. I wouldn't even care. Not even one little bit. Jeff knows that. Yeah. Why would you shame, care? Shame factor is literally zero. Do not care even at all. Bro, um, feel good, look good, fish good. <laughs> look good, feel good, fish good. That's yeah. a thousand. That's a thousand percent, dude. That's yeah. two thousand percent. Two thousand. <laughs> Ten thousand. <laughs> um. So, uh, DSG does fishing, but they also do hunting. Mm-hmm. What are you running for their hunting stuff right now? Um, I ha I just use their uh, Bexley set. It's called for turkey season. It's just like an ultra lightweight for really hot days. Um, that was the first time I've used it was this season, and I actually really liked it. It's really durable. I didn't have any snags or anything like that. You know, crawling on the forest floor. Um, I also have. Let's see, the Ella pants, which is like their second warmest pant. And then I have, I can't think of what their warmest set is now. Can't think of it, but I've got another set of bibs and jacket for like deer, deer hunting, um, which is their warmest one. And now I'm thrown off because I can't think of what it's called right at the moment. I mean, it's safe it's to cool. say you have a closet full of DSG. Like, do you yeah. have a DSG closet? Like, just one for that? Uh, no, not yet, because Derek's stuff is in there, too. What a we jerk. Have... Get him out of there. We have, one of our... we have three bedroom house, so we've got our room, um, spare bedroom, and then this room. The is... DSG <laughs> room. Yeah. <laughs> um, and our closet. <laughs> but... Yeah, I've got a whole bunch, and they're actually coming out with waterfall stuff this next season. So I actually pre-ordered the bibs and the jacket. Um, they've got like a D-Tech shirt and then gloves. So I oh, they're doing gloves. Wow. Yeah, they're just like a thin layer for like early yeah. season, but so That's but those awesome. are like the those are the ones that I find because you can just wear neoprene for retrieves and nasty weather. That's pretty much what I do. Like neoprene's like pretty, you can pretty much get those anywhere. Um, I would be really interested to see those gloves. Lightweight gloves, like I actually use my turkey gloves for uh, duck honey because it's like the only thing that's tactile enough where I feel like I'm not gonna accident like fleece gloves. I feel like I'm gonna pull the trigger on accident and I'm not gonna have a good day. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's Super. like a medium. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. what I'm nice. talking about. That's Look crazy. at that grip. Dude, that grip is, like, crucial. Yeah. So, pretty cool. That's is that rad. their is that their pattern? Like, the camo pattern? No, this is Max 5. Oh, dude, they're running Max 5? Oh, yeah. Real tree everything. Wow. What? Yeah. So, just so people know, like, when you're running Real Tree, like, you got to pay them royalties to, to, like, use the pattern. So, like, if you want to use, like, Mossy Oak Bottomland, right? You gotta go pay Mossy Oak like a per it's, I don't know how they structure it. I'm sure it's different for everybody, but you gotta pay them in order to run that stuff. So that's why like a lot of people when they're first starting out making gear, um, what they'll end up doing is they'll they'll do their own camel pattern, and people won't buy it because they only use real real you know Max Five or whatever, right? Mossy Oak, what whatever they like to do, you know, whatever they run. Um, but it's the only way they get the cost to be like, you know what? It's like seventy five bucks cheaper though. Right. Good for but DSG going out and getting after it. That's freaking cool, man. All right. Shout out Greg Whitaker, five dollars <laughs> super chat. Uh these Nico baits taste like a clinch knot with pepperoni grease. He said he's been eating Nico baits with ranch since last episode. Cheers to you, brother. Good call, uh, man. And your future colonoscopy. Good job. <laughs> uh Devin, oh, have you ever gosh. heard of Nico Bates? N I K K O? uh honestly i'm not sure is it mostly bass stuff yeah oh. so they're new to the north american market though i mean new within the last couple of years but uh okay. have you heard of jdm from like japan uh -uh. okay so they're like a big japanese brand but we had them on uh we had our guy scott on last week 
and uh it's you, you're familiar with z-man right yeah yep so it, yeah it's like z-man but higher quality <laughs> like they're they're absurd the detail on these baits are ridiculous uh i ordered well we ordered freaking 280 dollars worth of nico baits <laughs> right after that episode you guys don't even know that yet it's for There's the people wow it's for the people it's for the people it, it was a double order half was mine half was paul's but we got uh, a ton of baits i'm not even gonna tell you which ones you guys we're going to fish them tomorrow on the river we're gonna wade in the rain i mentioned this at the beginning of the episode it's gonna be 50 degrees the water is like 61 and we're going to be not wet waiting. Don't worry. We'll have waders and I'm going to wear sweatpants underneath that stuff too. You better believe it because it's going to be cold and raining with 17 mile an hour winds. I'm going to cry probably a lot all day long. And those gloves would be really nice in that scenario because I'm going to be like this. And Paul's probably going to complain about his hands being cold the whole time. Uh, if I know him. Fingerless wolves, bro. Oh, you're bringing them. <laughs> Dude, those, uh, Devin. Do you ever wear, uh, you know, Burst Light? Yeah. So those fingerless gloves that they have that are like 35 bucks or whatever. I know you only run DSG, but holy smokes. Those are like worth, those are worth every penny. Hey, I'll period. Put, they should have DSG. But you'll make them 10 times better. I will, I will wear it. I'll tell you right now, I'll go buy them. I will, if you guys make them, I will go buy them. Period. Oh. And I'll run them every day and I'll be like, they're so good why are you guys talking about this other acronym that which i will not mention JDM and it has nothing to do with what is going on in chat so i think we're just gonna have to move on i said jdm i said i said jdm <laughs> jdm not which that other thing i feel like i have to boot everybody and restart you guys are all booted <laughs> like, oh man demonetize well so, what did uh, this chat room become <laughs> All right, so uh, Devin, what's your favorite part about like working with DSG specifically? Like, why have you continued? Other than the fact that you like their gear, which is a great reason to work with a company. But um, for one, it's made by women, which is killer. Um, secondly, they ask us like how we like the gear, recommendations on changes. Like, they take all of that into consideration and put it into the new gear. Um, like, they want us. They actually do it. Like most yeah. companies say they do, but yeah. never do. Like they're yeah. supposed to do. Like they have a field team, but the field team reports back, but then everybody goes, <laughs> we're not listening to that. Exactly. <laughs> nice. I like they, that. Like if we don't do the survey at the end of the year and give all of our feedback and recommendations, they like bug us. Like, come on, get it done. Do it. We need this. You know, so it's really cool to see that they actually care about what we say and they want to make those changes or whatever they think is necessary and put that into the new gear. So that's so awesome. That how many, how many, com I pro I mean, I can think of three companies right off the bat that that's like the hook that they give you where they're like, we're going to reach out to you and we're going to ask for your opinion. Yeah. And then, and then we'll give you free stuff. If we like use the, the, you know, the, the advice that you gave us and then I'll legit be like, okay. And I will like write up a whole, I'll have like a word doc with like every little detail about like from like the the pattern wearing off to like the cuff like thickness like and I'm getting all nerding out. No yeah. one will ever ask and me. The, I'll email it out and they go, "That's nice." Deleted. Well, <laughs> there's yeah, there's one major company you worked with which we won't name, and then uh, we get offered them all all the time. Uh, I got to tell you guys the best and Devin, I want you to share your best too, because anytime you guys step into an influencer realm, I hate that word so much, but you start like making content, right? You get random AF offers via Instagram, email. Yeah, she's not, she knows, right? Facebook. So I'll give you my craziest offer that I recently got. And then Devin, you share yours. So most of the time, you get them from overseas and it's in broken English and it's from a person named Laura, right? So Laura emails me, you guys, and I get this. <laughs> there's a picture that came along with it. I'm going to, I'll share it on my IG, uh, maybe tomorrow, but it was a, a air conditioner, like neck wrap that looked like a uh, beats by Dre. If you just wore them like down on your neck 
and it supposedly like blew cool air up towards your head and they're like yo this is perfect for outdoors people and i was like this is the most ridiculous thing Sounds legit. i've ever seen i would never wear this on my neck in my life who did you say what did you say it looked like from star trek what's that guy's name and jordy laforge jordy laforge the dude that had like the, the visor the visor um who was also isn't that not the guy from reading rainbow yes it is same dude it is thank you uh <laughs> come on all right so that's that's the craziest offer i've gotten but i get tons all the time that are like youth fishing gear and it's like just garbage just garbage nonsense i delete them every i've never responded to a single one uh but what do you, what about you Devin? um i've never had anything crazy like that i get a lot of um dog lovers dog moms or coffee lovers um do you post a lot of dog pics like oh. then why <laughs> <laughs> which i know i don't get um they're mostly on my stories if anything yep. but yeah. i get that um i just had one recently but i can't remember what it was but yeah i've never had anything quite as weird as yours i got yeah. i've had someone just hounding me for the last like Two or three weeks. Um, About what? It's like freshen my freshen my balls. I think it's what it's called. I, I'm not joking. That's like what it's called, and it's not what you think it is. It is a. It's like a. Um, so it means legit, like like a tennis ball cleaner or a golf ball cleaner. No, I think I think it's a. Uh, it's like a dog toy or something, and they have legit. Yeah, they've legitimately they've legitimately reached out to me, like at least three or four times in the last couple weeks, and it's a different person every time. I haven't opened any of their accounts, but every time I get it, I'm like, I get that weird feeling where you're like, oh, how did this person find me? And then I like have to remember that it's not something dirty, and then like. But still, how did this person find me? And like, why are they asking me to, to rep for them? I was just, dude, I I'm just over know. here like, like, why can't Old Town or like some energy drink company that shall remain nameless because we plug them oh. all the freaking time? <laughs> I'm going to talk about that next week, actually. we Yeah, Paul and I had an amazing conversation we today. Did. In which we were talking about reaching out to supplement brands. And he was like, bro, I don't do supplements. And I was like, what about pre-workouts? He was like, I'll never take a pre-workout. I was like, you drink Monster every day. Like, don't tell me you never like, take a... It's the same thing. I, 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 I see your argument. It's the same I see, thing. <laughs> I see your point. I see your point. Um, I treat he's, it as he's like... like, nah. <laughs> No, I, well, no, I, see, I, see, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I'm not using it in that way at all um like i'm not working out after or before i'm not, like drinking a monster to like get a good pump in or anything like that like i drink a monster drink, because you can drink pre-workout to be yeah, awake and work too i do it all the time I guess, I guess i guess that's maybe my point it's like the only reason i drink monster at all is because it's like my guilty pleasure i'm like i don't drink pop but that is sort of a pop so i'm like yeah this is like the only thing i'm gonna drink that's it like pop. i'm not doing anything it's not a pop Definitely poison. Hundred percent recognize that it is going to kill me. Um, do you Devin, do you? Go ahead. I do drink coffee a lot. No, not a lot, but I do absolutely drink coffee. Love coffee. Coffee but is not, but not like eight cups a day. Like one cup a day, right? Uh, Two. I know you drink one every morning because you Snapchat me. One for sure. Like, one for sure. You usually have sometimes. Yeah, it's like one or two a day. Yeah, give yeah. or take. And that's I it. I drink. I drink one a day. And then if I need to pick me up throughout the day, Mio Energy is pretty fantastic. And then uh, if it's like a crazy day, then I might have an energy drink. But otherwise, like I don't buy those. And then pre-workout is something that you can use, which is actually better for you than what's in like Monsters, which is what I was trying to tell you. <laughs> and you're just I'm not like, disagreeing. I disagree. Like, nah. Devin, do you drink energy yeah. drinks? No. God, no. Ugh. God, no, she says. Paul? I'm not. It's a good. It's the right. That's the right answer. I, that is a great so, answer. Like, so get my, out of my, here. my monster like have it like kicked in because when yeah. COVID hit, I was working so many hours and like my soul is just getting crushed. Like I would work, you know, I'd log on at like five in the morning. I would take like a one hour break from like seven to eight when kiddo woke up and get him over to daycare, and then I would work the rest of the day, and then I'd take like a two hour break for dinner and put the kid to bed, and then sometimes I. Get get back on the computer, and like two o'clock, 
crack open a monster was like, let's go. Like mentally, it was just like, this is going to like help me get through my, you know, crappy day. And yeah, and it's just like spiraled out of control to where now, like, I just look forward to that boost of like, like, let's buckle down. Let's like do some work. And it's usually like one o'clock, two o'clock. I'm like, let's, let's crack some skulls. And that's, that's legitimately it. Now, I recognize that it is absolute poison and I'm actually ready as of today. I think I said this to Jeff. I'm just going to cut it out. Like it's gone. I will not have monster. It's so good to hear that because we, you're here surrounded by your friends and your family. (laughs) And we just want you to know that this is a monster intervention. I'm, I'm totally, uh, I'm totally on board. I'm not opposed to it. All right. That's great. Do you think you can do it though and just drop it? Or do you think you're going to have the withdrawal? If you knew me, if you knew me, it's, I like get a, I get a kick out of like taking like the most important thing, like the most important facet of my personality and just deleting it from my life. It's like, I love doing that. Yeah. I do the same. (laughs) I was like, I was like, uh, I like, I think I liked, I think I liked fantasy sports like more than most of my friends. um, Cause I just like math a lot. And like, this year, I was like, yeah, I'm just not going to do it. And, like, I legitimately had people emailing, like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I just don't want to do this anymore. It's fine. Oh, fine bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we do that often. It's fine. <laughs> that's that's going to be a non-issue. I should do, like, a thing where I have, like, I think I still have, like, five or six in the fridge. I should just go and I should just, like, stab a hole in them and be like, you're dead to me, monster. I want, yeah, I want a TikTok of you dumping those out like day one of quitting monster. <laughs> <laughs> that's never no. going to happen. It's the, no. that's the worst right. thing. Uh, chat, we got to roll you a giveaway. We're going to do that and we're going to hit yeah. Devin with a rapid fire here. But real quick, before we do that, I need you to know about the TikTok that Paul sent me that sends shivers down my spine to this day. There was, I think it was an Australian guy who oh. chugs. He chugs everything. He had a lineup of every flavor of monster. He mixed all of them into one gigantic, I mean, gigantic pitcher. I'm still he having heart palpitations. He drank the whole thing. No, in like a millisecond. Like 64 ounces of no, monster. Way more than that. It was way, way, way more than that. He had like 12. He had like a coffee one. He had the white, the green, the blue, the red, like whatever color. I don't even know what other colors. He had a whole line of them. There were probably 10 or 12 of them. And he's just like casually filling up this like giant pitcher and he just deleted it like it was nothing. Yeah. Did his he heart burped. explode? Did it yeah, did his heart explode? I don't know, Jackman. Uh, but his TikTok is deleted. No, it's not, it's still up. He's still alive. I don't know how. But if you guys remember the episode of Futurama where Fry drank one hundred cups of coffee and then he like stopped time and saved everybody from a burning <laughs> building. Anybody? Just me? Chaz is nodding his head, I know. <laughs> like, that was the most amazing episode ever. So I imagine him just, like, being, like, uh, uh, who's the, the, the freaking fast guy from X-Men? That's Flash. also... No. Oh, from that's, X-Men? That's DC from... Quicksilver, thank you. Uh, and, and, like, the Marvel movies. But, yeah, he just, like... The, the X-Men scenes for Quicksilver were amazing, where he, like, runs through the mansion and gets everybody out before it blows up. Dude. It's like that. Like that dude stopped time and then did some cool stuff. But anyways, let's do let's roll some some chitty chat. So chat, you know what to do. Just type chat stuff and uh we're gonna do a monster bass giveaway. So well, we're gonna everyone should have you 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 have to have chatted now and then we're yeah, gonna you, roll the, we're gonna roll the giveaway. Start now. We're gonna ask Devin a whole bunch of very difficult, very aggressive questions. And she can't uh, ignore them. She has to answer them. Uh, and while we're doing that, you're just going to type chat stuff. Great job, guys. You're doing great. Keep going like that and uh, invite your friends back. If they're nerds and they got off of this live, get them back in here. Because we're going to do that giveaway real soon. Vision of the Southeast. Okay. That's irresponsible, Fish in the Southeast. That's irresponsible. Fish in the Southeast. <laughs> just so you know, email. he already put his email in because he's pretending like he already won because he's won two of our giveaways. And uh, that's that's irresponsible, my friend. I see what you that, did there. That's the funniest thing I've ever that's seen. Legit. All right. Anyways, let's get right, so a little bit of a bunch of questions. Uh, they're not hard. <laughs> they're fun. Um, yeah. What is your favorite recipe to make with a uh, with a food that you have that you've like scrounged up from the out of doors? So like um, morels, your asparagus. What's your what's your whatever it is? What's your favorite recipe? Does it have to be forage food or? Yeah, I want to know the forage food. Um, 
just baked asparagus, a little bit of olive oil, butter, salt, or garlic salt, Parmesan garlic. cheese. You said the Parmesan. That's what I wanted to hear because Parmesan is like a cheat code. Can I Legit. can I give you can I give you a can I give you a tip when I do mine? There's there's two ways you can do it. I like it when it's totally cooked and you pull the asparagus off and then you put the parm on and you just let it sit for a minute. That's yeah. delicious. The stringy, right? Yeah. If you get some dry parm or the kind that you like when you get to the end of your parm and you get to the rind. Do it in a pan with a little bit of water. Once the water, like literally this much water at the bottom, heat up your asparagus. It'll cook in like three or four minutes. Then when the water's gone, put butter on it. Leave the heat on pretty high. Throw your parm down and then like sear it on the bottom. And it'll be like a crispy parm chip on top of your asparagus. It is murderously good. I should do another. I should do a food TikTok on that one. <laughs> I'll have to try that. Dude, it's... This is all that's a, all's big into like food TikToks right now. He's doing like Instagram reels where he's like, Look at me cook this meal. I got and chicken piccata on deck from, from today. The funny thing is, they freaking bang, dude. They do people, <laughs> like they, they crush it on Instagram. People, people connect with those. All right. Um, fa- so Cause now because they're, they're hungry, <laughs> that, we're, we're all humans. We want the bacon. We're, we're all humans. We eat food. <laughs> I am a human <laughs> man. <laughs> um, so. What's your favorite wild game dish then? Um, whitetail, backstab, smoked, oven, seared. What are we? In the cast iron with butter. Great answer. I have no. It's perfect. Everything you said was beautiful. Um, here's a tough one. This one is gonna ruffle some Ooh. feathers. Our croc. Our crocs a water shoe. Yeah. Do you, they are? Yeah, but I wouldn't wear them in a muddy river like you did. <laughs> yeah, you dork. Oh my <laughs> gosh. What? He's going to wear, he was going to, if it was warm tomorrow, Paul <laughs> would be wading the river in Crocs. Because he's a dork. <laughs> All right, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Hear me, <laughs> Hear me, me out, out, dude. out, dude. 1%, 1% moisture underneath of a Croc mixed with a cement floor is a recipe for you to actually a break your peel. neck. <laughs> <It's> straight <laughs> banana <You're> peel. Really... <laughs> you think monsters are bad for you? No. Croc, 1% moisture, garage floor. <laughs> That's <laughs> Like, you sweat. Like, a bead of sweat falls yeah. from your face, hits the ground, you step on it, banana peel slip out circa 1920s cartoons. I, like, I you're think it's... on your back. <laughs> I actually think, like, they're moving in my brain from, like, literally everything shoe like you could you could go and be a combat you could you could like you know oh, hunt tell, seals. tell, tell like, everybody the worst thing that you've ever done in your crocs which is mow the lawn in my oh, opinion I did it today it was great mowing the lawn and <laughs> crocs is that's what i think they're made for now i just think they're out i think no. they're outside, i think they're outside slippers that's all that, i'm thinking of them that now. is sociopathic activity <laughs> that is like yeah. because I the gra- in crocs. <laughs> when i when i split wood i use crocs that's my what safety shoe hell, <laughs> yeah, <dude. bro. laughs> never it's only steered me wrong like two or three times that's oh, not that many yeah. <laughs> now i have five toes total <laughs> but, it's one less croc you know that's one less little bit of work for the croc to do Oh All right. Uh, we already answered this one. I was going to ask hood or no hood, but you're kind of like in between leaning towards no hood, sounds like. He doesn't mind them. Yeah, I don't mind them. I'll use it um, really if it's windy and the wind's at my back. Oh. Otherwise, otherwise, no, because most of the time I have my hair either in a braid or in a pony in the back and my ears are still covered, so it doesn't really bother me one way or I'll another. I like it. What's your what's your favorite rod and reel combo? It can be for any type of fishing that you want. It's just like the most fun, effective, like you're like the one you if you're if you're gonna like you had to save one kid rod combo, which one would you grab? Um probably <laughs> my uh, medium light fast action spinning rod. Actually, this right here. It's from Chippewa River Custom Rods. It's a sick rod. Um, I've used it pretty much all spring long. So, medium, light, fast. I love that. That's a badass answer. I'm. I want one. 
that's freaking dude i'm that's the bet we may never get a better answer than that i don't think anyone's gonna answer better than that that's fantastic yeah what's your so. dude that's legit i was just telling jeff like i want like a that's pretty much exactly what i was telling jeff that i wanted oh, um, we got we got some super light setups to to go grab yeah like the really medium do. lights and and yeah ultra lights so sure. what's your what's your uh what's your favorite shotgun to shoot Ooh, my oh why do you gotta do this yeah see because now i made you think about ducks turkeys squirrels like you don't even know it's, rabbits who knows what kind of gun it could be it's all over the place Ooh, piece of candy freaking co-host <laughs> Ronky intensity which is an over under and i brought that out uh turkey hunting this year i unfortunately didn't tag one but i really love that otherwise my Franky affinity just my semi-automatic waterfowl gun yeah. So you're running. Are you running like pure? Is that like your only brand that you run? Uh, no, I do have an old Mossberg, but I don't use it a whole lot anymore. Um, but those are which, my two. Yeah. Which one? Uh, which Mossberg do you have? Is it like the standard? What's it called? Uh, 520 gauge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Does it rattle? Like, yes. It yeah. is like the most off putting the most off-putting thing in like all of hunting that I've ever experienced. I have, I have an 870 that I use for everything. And my father-in-law had a Mossberg and he hands it to me and I grab it and I went to shoot and I thought I was going to die. I was like, Whoa, but that's like, that's just how they are. And they know everyone, people use them for generations. They're great guns, but they do that rattle. It freaks me out. Yeah. Well, during deer season last year, excuse me, last year, um, we were in a ground blind and we had two does. This was the last day to hunt. Uh, two does come on the right side of us. So mm -hmm. once they got uh, behind one of the trees, I tried pulling up, but the, um, it rattled and they both stopped. And I'm like, oh gosh, here we go. And I was so nervous at the time. And I shot right over the top of one of them, but for sure they heard that and I was afraid they were going to hear it again or, you know, whatever, but. I would have quit that gun on the spot. I don't even know if I would have shouldered it. I've been like, you're dead to me. You're dead to me, gun. Stay That's, here. <laughs> I'm looking for a new slug gun this year, so. Nice. What do you, yeah. okay, we'll talk about that one offline. Um, <laughs> oh, which, uh, which, um, all right, this is the most important one. This is the last one, guys. Which gas station has the best coffee quick trip quick trip prize answer <laughs> i would have said speedway i would have gone speedway bro the quick trip oh, for speedway. sure around here and it's not very close so Ooh. It, quick trip casey's um come and go but Quick Trip's got my heart. Quick Trip. Box. I love that, dude. See, you know, you can always tell like a true outdoorsman when they know either a construction worker or an outdoorsman will always know what gas station carries the best coffee and who has the best snacks. Period. It's not a question. No. <laughs> All right, that's what I've got for you, Chaz. I think we're ready to run the giveaway. Death Crowell. Seth Crowell, you need to say hi real quick so that we know you exist and are still alive. And while we're waiting for Seth to come and claim his prize, which he just, he just posted a bunch of letters. Seth, are you, just, a, are you that's a cat? Coming, that's a delay. I think that's a delay. I think Seth is a cat behind a computer, potentially, <laughs> yeah. just walking across keyboards right now. Yo, he says yo. <laughs> now, Seth, type in your email. Don't worry. No, Chat it to us. No one will be able to see it. Jeff's not touching anything. Charles oh, is in charge. No hands. Yep. So you're safe. Send it. Get us your email, and we will uh, we'll reach out, and we will get you your twenty five dollar gift card to Monster Bass. And with it, you can get a really sweet burly fishing hat, which is what we think you're going to get. Um, <laughs> we would suggest that you would grab. <laughs> you can get whatever you want, man. Those shirts are red. There he is. He did it. So, thanks, buddy. Uh, Devin, thank you so much for being an awesome guest. Thanks for putting up with us. Thanks for putting up with all the uh, the technical good times that we put you through. Um, we do appreciate yeah, you. Yeah. We appreciate your time very much. Thank DSG for us, please, for uh, sending us your way. Um, where can people find DSG, and where can people find Outdoor Dev? Uh, well, thanks, first of all, for having me on. This was really fun. I was really nervous, but once we got going, it was just fine, like you said it would be. 
Um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. My Facebook page just got started not too long ago, so there's not much on there. Um, but Instagram for sure, outdoor underscore dev. And then DSG obviously has their three pages on Instagram and Facebook. DSG hunt, GS, DSG fish, and then DSG snow. And their website is uh, dsgoutdoor.com. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, if you're uh, one of our female listeners, go get yourself some BA equipment. And if you're a dude yeah. and you got a special lady who needs some really awesome gear, now you know where to go. And if yeah. you're awesome, just go follow all of those things anyways. And as soon as they make fingerless gloves, like, dude, I'm going to go get, like, two sets just in case I lose one. Do it. But if anybody has any questions about any of their gear, just shoot me a message on Instagram, and I can certainly help you out with the discount code as well. So. Oh, hey, Candy. There you go. Candy's on it. I love yeah. it. Oh, yeah. So there's a uh, good old Chaz and Nightbot working together. You're like, you're like Batman and Nightwing. You're, you're Chaz and Nightbot. I like that you went Nightwing. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's Nightbot. All right. Anyways, guys, you know, <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Uh, we love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us for another Thursday. We will be back yet again next thursday 8 p.m eastern uh do we have a guest lined up paul I we do have we a guest do. lined up we have I believe a, a... It's justin royal yeah that guy yeah i went i went ahead and said it i'm doing it uh so yep. justin royal will be on for real this time we actually posted about him being on way back in the day here's what happened my message to him got buried on instagram it was he wasn't being a jerk <laughs> he, he actually he literally ig messaged me and apologized for all of that mix up. So dude's awesome. I can't wait to talk to him. I think it's gonna be sweet. We're gonna talk about some six cent stuff because he were he rocks that team. Uh, but he also catches gosh dang bigs. I think he's down in Texas. And uh, we are also doing a tackle warehouse box swap. So you guys are gonna see one of those. He sent me a box. I sent him a box. It's gonna be real cool. So come back next Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna have him on. It's gonna be a good time. There's gonna be you know lots of beards, but mostly mine and his and not balls. Uh, <laughs> and we'll have fun. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Chaz, and we also Chaz. got our members only coming up June 8th. We did schedule it. I'll post it oh, on yeah. Instagram uh, a couple times the next few weeks. Uh, so if you are part of the Snorlax crew or Shark Deuce Nation, you can join in on our members only coming up June 8th, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the last one was a ton of fun, and uh, and it's only going to get better. So buckle up. And if you're a Snorlaxer, you can be on Discord and hop in and talk to us. We might even get brave and do video because we're not uh, monetizing it on YouTube. So you show up shirtless, we'll be like, what the heck are you doing? But we also won't get banned. So that's cool. Uh, all right, you guys, that's all we got for you tonight. Be sure to subscribe, smash the like, ring the notification bell, follow us in all the places. Chaz, we got stuff to do. Get us out of here. <laughs> Take us out. Took a swing at a wrecking ball. I trade for my downfall and I found a way to reconcile Cause in my heart it's not worthwhile It's a bloody battlefield where some go down, others heal In the end it's all the same All you can do is play the game Spitting at my feet and force me down a dead end street when 
Keep trying for one day. Whoa, whoa. 